everyone and happy Wax on Wednesdays. Today I'm going to do a two-part video and for the first technique I want to show is a question I get asked a lot about the accretion method. And accretion means to organically grow something and which is exactly what we're going to be doing on the encaustic surface, naturally growing a pattern to become a three-dimensional form on the board. And in the second video, I'll show a fun way that you can uh, decorate or enhance your raised accretion method once you've added it to your board. So for this to get started, I'm going to use this mesh. And this is mesh from the art store. It's for forming armatures. So it can usually be found in any art store, sometimes in the hobby store as well. And it's just a fine metal mesh. You can use stencils or, or different things to, or just your brush even, for the accretion method. This is just a really easy, it's a nice pattern and it's really easy to clean off and reuse. You hear a lot these days about the accretion method and the dry brush method in encaustic, right. and they really are the same thing. And what you're doing is growing a three-dimensional element on your board with wax. And the great thing about encaustic is that you can build all these textures and fun patterns in the wax and then color them in different ways and things that you couldn't do with normally with other mediums that are fairly simple to do in encaustic. So I'm going to go ahead and take my wire mesh and for this I'm going to use an old chip brush that I have in some clear medium here and the reason I use the chip brushes they are hog's hair, they are a natural bristle, they're a hog's hair bristle, but it's just a cheap, cheap chip brush. And chip I, brushes are really great for the dry brush method. And they really can build the texture a lot faster because the bristles are so stiff. And so it's just a great, I love to have, keep these around the studio for building a lot of texture. Also, this board I wanted to show you, um, a lot of times uh, we're painting on cradle boards or prepared masonite boards for encaustic. This happens to be just an old piece from another project. This is just an old piece of pine that I've prepped the surface with encaustic gesso and taped the sides and then gone ahead and added four or five layers of white encaustic paint to the surface. So you really, you know, can, as long as your surface is rigid and porous, you don't have to get the expensive cradle boards, uh, especially for your practice boards to just, just start out. This is a perfectly, um, perfectly nice pine board and I've, I sanded the front and then added about a couple coats of encaustic gesso and then four or five coats of white encaustic medium to prepare that surface. So I'm going to go ahead and just start brushing the medium on. And at first I'm not going to worry too much about my brush being really dry because I just want it to stick to the surface. But then I'm going to begin brushing with a fairly fine, with a fairly dry brush in order to build that texture. And I might not get all of the this solid rectangle of texture where the mesh is. I might only get bits and pieces and that's okay. I like the randomness. I don't want it all geometric like a rectangle. I would rather have it here or there sparsely added in different areas some more than others. It looks more natural and organic that way and not purposely, purposefully done. OK, 
Okay, so the first part, I'm just pretty much getting the wax down. Now I'm gonna lift this off and continue to increase my pattern. And you can see I have a very random pattern started here and I want to continue to build on that. And this is kind of a really um, neat and awesome texture in, on its, unto itself. And I'll lift the board so you can get a close look there. That's kind of an awesome texture to begin with. And I could actually just leave it at that and let it solidify and go ahead and color that. But I'm gonna grow it. I'm gonna grow it a little bit and for that I'll really need a dry brush now. And just wait for a minute or so before I go and add it, maybe 30 seconds outside the wax. And then go ahead, so it's not wet. I don't want to mess up my texture and get drips of wax. I want to grow the texture. The grow the texture that's already down and already started. So I want a really dry brush and the pattern is rough so it's picking up any extra wax that may be embedded in my chip brush. It's picking that up and collecting it and that in turn is growing the pattern. and growing that texture. So I'll rub my brush sort of this way and that, both directions, and then dip it back in the wax and go ahead and do the same thing over again. Let it dry, wipe it off well, and then let it start to solidify again. I don't want drips on my pattern anymore any more pattern added, I wanna work just with this specific pattern that I've already added. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait a minute till it starts to solidify and then go ahead and do the same exact thing. Growing that pattern. And this usually takes, you know, I can do this for up to 15 minutes and continue to grow this texture. Thank you. 